Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for attending this last talk of the Green Carbon Webinar Series. My name is Edith González Arias, and I'm a PhD student at the University of León in Spain, being part of the Chemical and Environmental Bioprocess Engineering Group. And my talk today is based on hydrothermal carbonization and how this treatment can convert different wastes into coal-like products. As you know, uh, biochar or hydrochar can be used for many purposes, such as soil amendment, catalyst, absorbance, and so on. However, here the aim was to obtain a coal-like uh, biofuel. The outlines I'm going to talk about are these ones. First, the wastes that have been used in this project and the reasons for selecting them. Secondly, I'd like to, um, to explain a little about the HTC and the reaction parameters chosen. Next, the assessment of the different analysis carried out for the solid samples. And finally, the conclusions we obtained from, from these experiments. Although different fractions can be obtained from HTC, only the solid one uh, will be considered for this talk. Two different wastes were used in, in this project, olive tree pranin, uh, collected from the south of Spain, and a kind of organic waste, uh, which is known as off specification compost, which was collected from a nearby municipal waste treatment plant, and I will explain a little more about this, this residue later. Now let's see what happens with olive tree pranin. Uh, it is calculated that all over the world, approximately uh, 8.6 million of hectares of olive groves are grown, and more than half of this corresponds to European countries. And approximately 2.5 million of hectares represents the Spanish growing area. And taking into account that at least one dry ton of olive running is generated per hectare, this shows a great potential for energy recovery, which is our main objective here. Then, of specification compost is defined as a biostabilized product derived from different input types, including various solid wastes, sludge, and liquors, and or the oversized material resulting from screening such product. It consists of a mixture of different fractions, such as glasses, stones, plastics, metals, and the organic fraction, the one that is useful for our purpose. This kind of compost doesn't meet the requirements in Spain for being used as soil amendment, so it has not a current use. It's just disposed and stored. Uh, for this reason, it was selected as one of the feedstocks since we're trying to, um, to find a way to reduce or at least eliminate this, the amount of this kind of waste. Uh, in order to analyze the suitability of the selected residues to be converted into a coal-like product, three different times and temperatures were selected as reaction parameters, 3, 6, and 9 hours, and 220, 250, and 280 degrees. So in a 2-liter steel pressure reactor, uh, these nine different tests were carried out. In this case, we were looking for the solid phase, so uh, it was separated from the solid from the liquid one by vacuum filtration and further analyzed. Olive tree pranin was firstly carbonized for selecting the adequate reaction parameters to obtain a good quality solid fuel, and then blends of, of specification compost and this olive pranin were also submitted to HTC at the selected parameters. Okay. As we are looking for a biofuel, it's really important to know the behavior that these samples show during combustion. For that, thermogravimetric analysis is essential. Ignition temperature and combustion index were calculated with the information provided by this equipment. Ignition temperature determines how easily a given fuel is ignited, so a lower value is interesting. Combustion index depends on the ignition temperature, the burnout temperature, and the maximum and average mass loss rates. And it reflects the burning ability of the fuel. So a higher value reflects a more satisfactory combustion performance. The bigger this index is, the more vigorously the sample burn out. 
And now we can start with the results obtained from the olive tree running carbonization. The parameter of severity factor, which is represented as the R factor here, allows for the understanding of the effect that reaction parameters have in the conversion of biomass. As we can observe in this graph, generally the trend of the mass yield decreases with the increase of the severity. And at the same reaction temperature, a decrease in the mass yield from three to six hours is first seen, followed by an increase from six to nine hours. This behavior may be because part of the biomass biopolymers dissolve in the liquid fraction and then uh, further react to generate other solid products, commonly known as secondary char. Uh, this can fill the pores of the primary char, therefore increasing this mass yield. Um, as far as proximate analysis is concerned, we can see a clear trend with the severity. There is a decrease in volatile matter, the blue part, and an increase in the fixed carbon, uh, the red one. The enhancement of uh, this fixed carbon is basically due to dehydration and decarboxylation reactions in the process. And this is related to the increase in higher heating value and the energy densification in the hydrochar. Until reach the 250 degrees and three hour test, uh, the decrease in volatile matter is more pronounced. However, this isn't so important at treatments at higher severity, which is in accordance with the rest of the conducted analysis that we will see. And relating to ash content, this presents values of around 2%, which is an interesting point since this low content avoids operating problems in boilers during combustion. Um, okay. In this slide, i like you to see the trend that the ultimate analysis follows. It is clear that as severity of the process increases, also the carbon content does. If we take a look at the higher heating value, uh, represented by the dashed line, we can see how it increases until reach the test carried out at 250 degrees and three hours. And then it is similar for the rest of the runs. This is in accordance with the carbon content that we can, that we can see here and the fixed carbon content. Um, this provides us an important information about the tests. If we want to obtain a good quality solid fuel, there's no need to conduct the HTC at temperatures higher than 250 degrees, and we don't need to keep the experiment more than three hours. This makes the process be more feasible, since it takes less time and requires less energy for obtaining a proper biofuel. Okay, with the ultimate analysis, the hydrogen carbon and the oxygen carbon ratios can be calculated, allowing for the representation of the bank wavelength diagram. These ratios are a sign of the carbonization degree, depending on the severity factor in HTC. This allows for the comparison of every hydrochar with different types of coal. And generally, the lower these ratios are, the better the combustion characteristics. Um, hydrochar produced at higher temperatures present ratios similar to those of lignite coals. And moreover, a uh, decrease in these atomic ratios shows an increase in uh, high energy bonds, the carbon-carbon bonds, and a decrease in low energy bonds, the hydrogen carbon and oxygen carbon bonds, which lead to an improvement in higher heating value. This fact could be explained uh, by the reaction taking place in HTC. For example, uh, the hydration reactions can eliminate the, the hydroxyl groups, while the carboxylation reactions can eliminate the carboxyl and carbonyl groups. Another interesting analysis for the characterization of hydrochars is the cell wall analysis. For a better understanding, uh, the columns are grouped by reaction time. And as it can be seen, when increasing the temperature, both the cellulose and hemicellulose have been degraded, and most of the mineral matter has been diluted into the process water. Therefore, the remaining part in the hydrochar turns out to be lignin, which is not so easily degraded by HTC. 
This is also related to the improvement in higher heating value, as we will see in the following slides, uh, because cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin have different ranges of decomposition. So by using thermogravimetric analysis, we can observe how these DE profiles agree with this analysis. This is an example of the results obtained from a thermogravimetric analysis. In this case, it's a comparison between all the samples obtained at uh, the reaction temperature of 220 degrees. And it is interesting to see how the peaks are smaller in height when reaction time increases. This is a result of the volatile matter loss in accordance with the proximate analysis, but also the uh, cellulose and hemicellulose loss, as we've just seen. At this reaction temperature, uh, which is the lowest one, the main peak appears between 270 and 350 degrees, being this the cellulose and hemicellulose degradation area. The second peak, um, corresponding mainly to lignin degradation, doesn't seem to have much importance here uh, at this reaction temperature, but it will do in the following ones. This also allows to calculate the ignition temperature and the combustion index. And as we will see later, these three hydrochars show ignition temperatures quite lower than the others uh, due to this main peak and lower combustion indexes as well due to the lower mass loss rates. At 250 degrees of reaction temperature, the first peak is now, is now a kind of shoulder. So the main one now shifts to the right, making the ignition temperature be higher. Um, at this reaction temperature, if you remember, uh, the main component in hydrochar uh, was lignin. And the fixed carbon content represented um, an important percentage. So all of this makes sense with the range uh, that this, this main peak appears. And something similar happens at the reaction temperature of 280 degrees. The main peak makes the ignition temperature be higher. And as the mass loss rate is much higher than the others, also the combustion index will be higher. So now, here we can see the combustion parameters. So as ignition temperature is very related to the volatile matter content, it makes sense that as volatile matter uh, decreases with the severity of the process, the ignition temperature increases, reducing the ease of ignition of the hydrochar. Uh, these values at 220 degrees and 250 degrees show great differences. For example, at six hours. Uh, this difference is approximately 100 degrees, while between 250 and 280 degrees, this difference is minimal, only 10 degrees. This is consequence of the volatile matter content, and it can be easily seen in the thermogravimetric profiles. And now, uh, combustion index indicates that combustion performance is better if this index is higher. So paying attention to one reaction temperature, this index increases with the reaction time, except for the uh, reaction temperature of 220 degrees. The reason for this behavior is that combustion takes place over a longer time and the maximum mass loss rates are lower. So now, bearing in mind all the, the obtained results before, now it's time to talk a little about the other experiments carried out by using HTC. Top specification compost here was manually separated to eliminate as much inert matter as we could. Then it was grinded and blended uh, with olive running at different proportions, 25, 50, and 75%, as it can be seen in the image. And then HTC uh, was conducted at 250 degrees and three hours based on our previous experiments. Uh, then let's see some analysis carried out for 
this hydrocell, just a few. For the proximate analysis, a clear trend is visible. For the raw samples, it can be seen an increase in volatile matter when increasing the olive tree branding content in the blend and an important decrease in the ash content. For the hydrochar, volatile matter doesn't show a pronounced increase, but fixed carbon does. Above all, in the, in the blends with a higher concentration of olive pruning. Besides, as olive pruning doesn't have a large amount of ashes, this reduction can be seen in the blends as well. And here, we can see the ultimate analysis along with the higher heating values. It is clear that the raw samples increases their carbon concentration when olive tree pruning content is higher in the blend. For the hydrochars, it's the same, but in this case, it's more pronounced. It's interesting to note that the hydrochar obtained from the compost by itself exhibits worse results than the raw material. Therefore, we can conclude that is the olive pruning the component that allows for the improvement in the carbon content and consequently in the higher heating value. This is the thermogravimetric profile of the raw samples. As we saw before, these curves are in agreement with the previous, the previous results. Uh, the peak corresponding to olive tree pruning is higher than the others. And this is uh, due to the, the large fixed carbon content compared to the other blends. And the rest are quite similar, the same as we saw in the, in the proximate analysis. In the hydrochar profiles, a shift to the right is clear due to the volatile matter reduction and the increase in fixed carbon content, which is quite important in the hydrochars obtained from from olive tree pruning and a blend, the blend with the 75% of olive tree pruning. At this point, it's interesting to take into account the ash content. As we can see in the top left part, where the mass loss of the samples is shown, if this content was lower, the peaks would be higher, as it happens um, for these two samples, these two, these two blends. With these profiles, Every. With these profiles, along with the ultimate and the proximate analysis, we can do a first assumption uh, of specification compost by itself is in a good way to use as fuel. However, blended with a biomass can accomplish some parameters useful for, for energy purposes. Nevertheless, uh, previous methods to eliminate the inert matter are needed. And finally, some conclusions obtained from these experiments. HTC can be an alternative in weights management. A olive tree pruning is a large leftover in Spain, so needs to be treated. The same as off specification compost, which is an actual issue to solve nowadays. And more related to HTC, reaction parameters of 250 degrees and three hours seem to be enough to obtain a high quality solid fuel with combustion properties similar to those of, of uh, lignite coal. And I mentioned it at the beginning, and I'd like to say again that other valuable fractions obtained from HTC can be useful, not only for energy applications, but also for obtaining different products. And this is on what we are currently, currently working. So that's all. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you, if you have some questions or suggestions, please let me know or send me an email or whatever. Thank you again.